Hi, Year 12, so I'm on page 28 today. And on page 28, um, we could consider this as episode 3 because a new character Andromache enters. And on the stage, um, in, um, while you're reading the stage directions, um, it's clear that enter Andromache and her young son, Astinax, wheeled in on top of a baggage wagon loaded with spoils. That stage setting is really important here because um, we could see that the Greek soldiers enter the stage pulling Andromache and her baby as snacks on a wagon, actually piled up with other spoils of war. And the chorus is actually announcing her arrival and calls on to Hecuba to come and see her daughter-in-law and her grandchild. But that stage direction is important because uh, they have been dehumanized. It actually indicates that uh, both Andromache and the child has been dehumanized to the point that they are actually transported as objects to be um, to be tra uh, stripped away from the city and claimed by the Greeks. So they are just they are so much so much uh, they are actually dehumanized to that particular stage where they have been dragged um, and uh, loaded with the other spoils of the war. And we could also say that the entrance of Andromache and Astinax on top of the baggage wagon actually parodies the dignified the procession, dignified processional entrances uh, traditionally accorded to the figures of royal uh, stature in ancient Greek tragedy. Usually it will be like a very processional entrance, but here uh, this um, particular stage setting is actually giving us an indication or this actually uh, the arrival of Andromache and Astinax on top of the baggage is actually parodying that uh, dignified processional entrance. The son of Achilles will hang up Troy's splintered splinter as a Troy under some Pythian temple roof. Andromache, my Greek masters are only taking what theirs. Hecuba, hey, hey. Andromache, don't sing my victory song. Hecuba, agony. Andromache, the agonies are all mine. Here, I, I, see, Hecuba and uh, here they are actually involving in in, in, in a kind of, um, or Euripus actually employs antiphonal, antiphonal lament. What do you mean by antiphonal means? Sung by two alternating voices. So here we are getting um, the voices of Hecuba as well as Andromache. So that's why in this episode, Euripus is actually trying to employ antiphonal song. You could use this as a meta language, antiphonal. A N T I P H O N A L. Antiphonal means sung by two alternating voices. So it's an antiphonal lament showing that two women are actually joined in their sorrow. Both of them are struggling. They both have sorrows. They are sharing their sorrows. So remember uh, about that word antiphonal. Entromachy, the agonies are all mine. And Entromachy says that the grief, the agony is all mine. So, so the, the whole Two, three pages is full of the grief and the lament that the uh, women are, all women are doing, especially Andromache and Hecuba here. So the agonies are all mine. Hecuba, Osphius, had learned to be suffered long. Hecuba, my children, Andromache, no longer grown old in tears. All our happiness, Troy, our city, gone. So Hecuba says that all our happiness gone, has gone. Troy, our city, gone. Again, our city, inclusive language. Entromachy into misery. Hecuba, my children, my heroic sons. Entromachy, all gone, all gone. Hecuba, what grief is like mine? Again, Hecuba asked. See, on, the, on page 28, we could see uh, Entromachy saying, the agonies are all mine. And on page 29, Hecuba says, what grief is like mine? So what does it actually show? Even though both of them are sharing the grief, um, Euripus is trying to underpin the idea that grief is so much personal. It has got profound individual or uh, showing that grief is actually profoundly individual experience. It, no one can understand others' pain. It is a profound one and it's individual experience. And that might be the reason in order to show that uh, Euripus is actually trying to portray this um, two characters, especially in their antiphonal lament, we are getting the idea that, see, grief affects them individually. Grief is very much personal. It affects it differently to different people. And it is very individual and no one can understand the depth of their one's grief. So Andromache says, my suffering. So, and Hecuba says, what grief is like mine? Andromache says, my suffering. 
take you by the sobbing the moans and to make you of our city again inclusive language take you by ruined smoke black in the storm and to make you my husband where are you i need you now save me so antromachy from the very beginning from the very moment of antromachy's entrance she is actually in tears she cries and the theme of tear the theme of tears actually underpins the entire story the trojan women nirupes emphasizes that in this world of war each woman actually cries whether it be for a fallen um, father brother or a son who has fallen in a combat so nirupes is actually trying to emphasize the senselessness and hopelessness of war through the sufferings and the griefs and the laments of these women especially in antromachy and hecuba my husband where are you so she is looking forward to hector and she is calling hector where are you i need you now save me and immediately hecuba says you are calling for a dead man he has gone my first born son he is in hades and i am in misery my first born son is in hades my hector is in hades and i am in misery antromachy protect me now as you have always done hecuba oh my priam whom the greeks barbarously killed so see you could see the antiphonal lament of antromachy and hecuba and they are lamenting for their own husbands and um, the children so here hecuba is lamenting for her husband priam antromachy old man great king princely father your sons were famous throughout the world now antromachy is uh, addressing priam and says that old man he was great king princely father your sons were famous throughout the world hecuba let me sleep in the arms of death forever so she is so depressed and antromachy says so bitter these longings hecuba sharp pains now and sorrows unceasing sorrows are unceasing it is never going to stop antromachy for the city we have lost we have lost the city again we inclusive language hecuba and misery is ever increasing miseries are always increasing antromachy the gods always hated us they malice spared your son so that his contemptible marriage should bring ruin to the citadel of troy now in bloody pieces he is lying for the vultures in palace's temple our slavery is his doings antromachy is directly saying to hecuba that the gods always hated us the gods always hated troy when he says antromachy says that our slavery is his doing one one of the reason why we are enslaved in slave why we are in slavery now is because of his son paris because of his lust for helen hecuba troy mother of us all antromachy tears blind me deserted a ruin hecuba this pitiful end antromachy the house of my children were born in hecuba i have lost my home i have lost my children everything no grief can encompass what i feel again that line is really important as i told you before europe is trying to show that grief is very personal and it is individual each one has got their own experience about pain profound individual experience of pain and that's why hikiba says that no grief can encompass what i feel so hikiba cannot understand the pre uh, pain of antromachy and same way antromachy cannot understand the depth of the uh, pain of hikiba that's why that's why that's how it is life is always like that and other people will not understand what the other person is going through no funeral song flow tears for a city and family shattered past hoping only the dead shed no tears they are beyond weeping chorus suffering people find some comfort in tears to give voice to grief is a kind of pleasure antromachy o oh, hecuba mother of the sun who spared so many of these griefs do you see what they are doing hecuba i see what the gods are doing making monuments of worthless men and demolishing the good antromachy we are loot my son and i soldiers plunder born royal and made slaves the whole the whole world's overturned now antromachy stresses on her situation and she says that both of us me and my child astinax we are just soldiers plunder now we have been dehumanized like an object we are soldiers plunder we though we were born royals we are made slaves now hecuba necessity is logical and merciless cassandra has just been torn from my arms by 
schools. See, they cannot understand each other. When one person says about their personal suffering, the other one immediately um, says that, see, I've got more than that. Uh, my suffering is greater than that. And Trimiti, no, no more. I can't bear it. So some second attack flatters his masculinity by dragging off your daughter. But there is worse pain to come. Now, when Hikiba says, or Hikiba conveys the message to Entromiki that Cassandra has been taken away from me, Entromiki could not believe that. Entromiki says, oh, is she going to be raped again? So some second Ajax flatters his masculinity by dragging off your daughter. And then only she remembers, but Hikiba has worse pain to come. Now she is trying to reveal something to Hikiba. And she says that, but there is more worse pain to come. Hikiba, of course there is. There is no end to pain. The next horror will always be worse than the last. And look at the viewpoint of horror. Hikiba and Hikiba say, believe that the pain is endless. Suffering is endless. That's why Europe is trying to show the senselessness and hopelessness of war because it is endless suffering. And that's why Hikiba says the next horror will always be worse than the last. And now Antoniki is revealing she is dead. Your daughter, Polyxena, murdered at Achilles' tomb as a sacrifice to the dead. Now, Antromachy is revealing that. And again here, uh, Antromachy stresses that uh, Cassandra, sorry, Polyxena is dead. Your daughter, Polyxena, murdered at Achilles' tomb as a sacrifice to the dead. She has been murdered at Achilles' tomb as a sacrifice to the dead. And again, dramatic irony is at play here. Dramatic irony. What do you mean by dramatic irony? Dramatic irony here because all the Greek people, all the Athenian audience and the Greek in Greek mythology, it is clear that uh, Polyxena has been sacrificed. And even Tacitus mentioned that the audience uh, knows that, but it's a it's a completely new news to Hecuba. So dramatic irony is at play there, as the sacrifice of Polyxena is well known uh, for the from Greek mythology. And again, your daughter Polyxena murdered at Achilles' tomb as a sacrifice to the dead. That is the current situation of Polyxena. She has been murdered. And look at the Cassandra situation. Yes, been, she has been taken away as, uh, as a concubine. And now these two situations actually shows how the women has been treated following a conquest, the utter treatment or the pathetic uh, situation of women after a conquest. Hecuba, and it is. So that is what Talthibius meant. The truth, his diplomatic evasion conceal. Uh, now only Hikiba is realizing that is what Talthibius meant before. So Hikiba, who um, did not understand, Hikiba, who did not understand uh, Talthibius earlier, finally understands what he was gently trying to tell her. So maybe you could say that Talthibius, in his attempt to be gentle and respectful, accidentally de deprived Hecuba of the full knowledge of her daughter Polyxena's fate. And remember, he, he was able to delay her pain, but he was unable, Talthibius was unable to prevent it. So that's also in, important. Is there any use in uh, delaying a sad news where when one cannot prevent it? But Talthibius, we could see Talthibius as a very respectful and gentle person. That's a, that might be the reason why she he doesn't want to give Hecuba all the all the all the details of the death of um, Polyxena. Andromache, I saw it with my own eyes. I got down from the cart, cut down the body, covered it with her dress. And now Andromache says that you know, I saw I saw the I saw Cassa, I saw Polyxena. I saw it with my own eyes. I got down from the cart, cut down the body. Covered with her, covered it with her dress. So you know that um, the life after death or the proper burial is really important for the people, especially Greek uh, Greek people. And uh, now Andromache clarifies here to Hecuba that see, I have guaranteed a safe travel uh, of her soul. She recognizes the importance of honoring and maintaining the tradition. So it's so good that Andromache has got down from her cart and has covered it with her dress and done all the all the rituals of uh, in order to in order to guarantee a safe travel in the afterlife of that person's soul. So it's uh, important to remember that even in the aftermath of an enemy invasion, uh, Andromache is actually recognizing the importance of honoring and maintaining the tradition. At least Andromache is trying to honor and maintain that uh, tradition. Hecuba, my poor child, ritually murdered, 
filthy sacrilege oh my poor girl butchered like an animal now hikiva is lamenting again about the death of her child death of her daughter oh my poor girl butchered like an animal again the animal imagery is coming into place here butchered she was butchered like an animal simile plus it's also an animal imagery animal imagery or it's a motif because um, many times europe is exactly trying to use um, animal imagery or the repeated use of um, likening something to an animal so animal imagery is coming uh, in place there and remedy anyway she is dead however it happened and she is happier than she is happier dead than i am living and now and remedy at this point she concludes that anyway she is dead now yes a daughter is dead however it happened and she is happier dead than i am living now don't worry about your child because she is dead and she is happier than me who is actually living so she believes that death is better than a life of pain and remedy actually believes that death is actually better than a life of pain the dead cannot grieve and they cannot contemplate their suffering still alive antromeki is actually uh, aware of the losses and she has uh, losses she has endured and how far her fortunes have fallen that's the reason why she says that she is happier dead than i am living dead ones are happy hikuba no no one is happier dead the living at least have hope to be dead is to be nothing see look at the contrasting views and here hikuba says that no no one is happier dead the living we people who are living at least we have hope to be dead is to be nothing look at the contrasting view point of hikuba hikuba throughout the play she is having a battle whether um whether life has got meaning or not she is in a constant battle because on page um on page 26 the last sentence she says that the lucky ones are dead that's exactly what antromeki said now the lucky ones like polixena uh, is actually happy the lucky ones are dead they are lucky ones because they are happy they they don't uh, have to suffer that's exactly what uh, hikuba told said to us on page 26 but here when antromeki said the same point of view hikuba is having a contrasting view and hikuba says that no no one is happy or dead the living at least have hope to be dead is to be nothing it is better to live so see at this moment so on page 26 uh, hikuba had a very nihilistic view a very opposing view towards a life but now at this point she is having hope and she says that we people who are living at least have hope to be dead is to be nothing so that's why i told you hikuba is in a constant battle uh, a constant battle and she couldn't decide or she she is not realizing which one is true she doesn't know whether life has got meaning or whether it's not good and that's why she is having a constant battle throughout the play she is having that constant battle and that's why she is giving that contrasting views so here in order to uh, so in that agon between helen and sorry in that um, in that um, antiphonal lament between hecuba and helen we could actually see or towards the end of that antiphonal lament we could see that hecuba is having some kind of hope hecuba believes that at least we people who are living have hope and she believes that to be dead is to be nothing so keep that in mind and that contrasting view points of hecuba and antromeki and how hecuba uh, is having that battle is really important so keep that in mind